Hello Aquarius. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoincha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship in the past. For others of you, this could be a situationship. For a small portion of you, this could be somebody that you have met and you know there's a whole lot of energy there, but no one's really speaking up. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have, and I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. All right, so we have here fear followed by creativity, surrender, wild woman. Then we have pleasure, doubt, illusion, sensuality, and we have centering under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. All right, I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aquarius, the things that I've done to you, all the things that I've put you through, I feel insecure and fearful now, even paranoid. I shouldn't have done what I did. I know that in this connection, I came off in the beginning as somebody who is very confident, self-sufficient, self-reliant. There was no insecurities. But now things have changed. Now that you've discovered the real me, I'm still trying to hide the rest of that, but I now realize that you are someone who should not have been treated like that. I now feel nervous. I have anxiety. Sometimes even panic attacks when I think about reaching out to you, how to be with you, how to connect with you. I feel no confidence, a whole lot of insecurities. I'm nervous. I feel unworthy and I feel worthless. A long time ago, I felt that I could handle certain things and I could move on, but I have realized there are certain things that are beyond me. I have to suffer the consequences. I never did that before. And I never realized the things that I did and how it would affect you. And now there's this sense of wanting to create something with you. I want, I want to move on in this connection and create a beautiful connection with you, something long lasting for the world to see because I have surrendered to you. You do not know this and you cannot see this, but deep down inside, there's a feeling that I have where I belong to you and you belong to me. I feel that in this connection, there is this desire that I have, this thought that grows inside of me, this feeling that I can't shake. You and I are meant to be together. 
my mind, my heart, my body, I have surrendered to you. And if you were to lead, now I would follow. I also feel that in this connection, I was not truthful. And you caught me in that lie. You have seen that side of me that has been deceiving. There has been deception. There has been suspicion. And because of this, how can you actually trust somebody like me? Now I understand all the things that I have said, all the things that I've done. They were not right. They cannot possibly be right. I am someone who has not told you the whole truth. I have given you bits and pieces and taken out what you don't need to know, or I thought you may not, because if you knew the whole truth, you wouldn't like it. I have been sneaky. I have been hiding things from you. I also feel that in this connection, there is this sense of pleasure that I do feel. I want to feel this pleasure. I want to be that person who can be with you. But I also want to feel the spiritual pleasure and the physical pleasure. Because that is something that I have always felt. I just now know that because of the things that I have said and done, the way I have behaved, it is extremely difficult for me to move on and to be that individual who can change things and who can make things, to make things feel different. Now I doubt that anything that happens in this connection might even work out. I don't feel that it will, I don't feel that it can. Because now there is a lack of faith and there is a lack of trust. Because of this, I know that all that has happened, it will be difficult and it will be complicated. Because of this, I doubt that this connection might even work out. I don't think it will. There's this sense of embarrassment that I feel, too. I hide behind a veil, behind a false mask. I do not want you to see the truth of who I am. I want to hide everything from you. And therefore, you do not see that side of me. I don't want you to see that side of me. So much has happened. And I keep all of my senses... My whole self, I keep it hidden from you. I do not want to show you how I truly feel, what is inside of my heart, what's inside of my mind. I do feel embarrassed, but I dare not tell you what truly it is that I feel on the inside. Because if I did, it would make me weak. And I don't want to be that person who appears to be weak. I also feel that in this connection, there is a sense of sensuality. You are someone who I feel is very, very gorgeous, good looking, tantalizing. You are alluring. I feel this sensual connection, and that is where I get this pleasure from. I like the contours of your body. I love your skin, your eyes, your lips. And I wait sometimes to be with you, to think of you even, to fantasize about you. I do do that. Because you are, to me, you are a tease. Being at this distance, seeing you from afar, it tempts me to be with you. And even though we are far apart, 
There's a longing that I have for you that I just can't let go of. Overall, I realize now that you are somebody who makes me feel very grounded. We are the yin and the yang. If I'm the moon, you are the sun, and we come and go and dance in perfect harmony. I can always rely on you that you will rise again. You'll always be there. But do I take that for granted? Yes, I do. And for that reason, I think I need to take a step back and appreciate what I have had this entire time. I never did. I took you for granted. And I never truly valued you the way that I should have. For now, all that I know and all that I feel is this desire and the sense of wanting to be with you, wanting to learn from you. But I can only do that if I open up to you. And if you and I even have a chance together. Because before things were different, I was different. But now things have completely changed. I am no longer the same. We both have changed. All right. Aquarius. Interesting. So you have a situation here where you're dealing with somebody who lied to you. They essentially had some type of information and either they gave you half the information or they took out some information or they just didn't tell you at all. And that is a problem here because it seems like there was a lack of faith and a lack of trust that grew from this. And it's as if you caught them red-handed. Some of you may have. This is a general love reading. Whatever the case is, there was a sense of deception, deceit. There was suspicion in this connection. And there was, the word treachery comes to mind. Treachery. Your person of interest is still hiding from you. Here we have the illusion card. They're not really wanting to open up to you. Although they know deep, deep down inside, they know it is very important to open up, but they are not opening up. All right. So for those of you who are new, the set of cards I just had, that is the current situation, the current status. The next set of cards I have here, this is a Lover's Path Tarot, and this I go a little bit into the past in your life to see what happened in the first place that may have caused any sort of issues. So in the beginning, things were going great, it was fine, and things started to progress forward, but then all of a sudden something happened, and things just went downhill from there. What was that? What truly happened? What caused that? This is for those of you who may not have received any sort of closure. Your person of interest may ghosted you. You may have ghosted you. They may have just moved on, not even told you what was on their mind, what was in their heart. They may be even messaging you, maybe once a week, once a month, and you still wonder, okay, where do we stand now? What's going on? So this is for those of you that never really got that communication from them. This is me going into the past to have a look at what was on their mind, what was in their heart, so this can provide you with some guidance. So what truly did they do? This is not always about you, okay? This is what they were thinking at the time. <sighs> arrogance. That's the word I'm getting. Queen of coins. <laughs> I was getting queen of arrogance. Queen of coins and six of staves. All right, let's have a look. Mm 
All right, with the Queen of Coins, this talks about how at some point in time, your person of interest started to lack loyalty, warmth and affection and even love. That sense of wanting to create prosperity and harmony no, harmony no longer existed. Here, it talks about the need to ground oneself finally. But there was an over-materialistic orientation to life from this person. Why? Because there were disappointments in the home environment. So there's two things here. An over-materialistic orientation to life. This is what your person of interest felt. They were very materialistically inclined. So, you know, this person may have wanted um, the most amount of things in terms of like name brands or even something blingy, something sparkly, shiny, you know, brand new car, this, that, and the other. But it's, it was mostly to show off. So this is something that they had in terms of a problem. And it's not only showing off, it was also they may have been living more than they could afford, like their means. They were not earning as much and they were they were spending more money. So we are dealing with somebody here who had this mindset. But the problem with this mindset also is that it, there was disappointments in the home. Now you might be dealing with somebody who literally was a shopaholic or some type of um, substance. It could even be a habit, a bad behavior. But because there were disappointments on the home front, this could be problems at the workplace. This could be problems at home, um, problems anywhere that they go, uh, in any institute, whatever. But wherever they were, they were not feeling comfortable. And in order to find that comfort, they were spending money or their time, energy, and effort on things that would make them happy materialistically. Now, materialistically could be literally like a shopaholic, but it could also be somebody that is using substances to keep themselves busy. Maybe even traveling the world to keep themselves busy, but it's money being spent. I don't think there's anything wrong traveling the world. It's always a great thing to do as long as you're safe and you know where you're headed. Um, but I do see this person using money to distract themselves. That's what it comes down to. And that's a problem because that is not the solution, is it? No. There should be some type of, it could be talk therapy, it could just be, you know, let's just talk and work things out. But your person of interest had this way of distracting themselves by using the only means they knew, getting something new in their life, doing something new in their life. I'm even seeing somebody here skydiving. <laughs> I am actually seeing somebody skydiving. So somebody may have kind of like wanted um, a different, like a change of scene and they wanted to do something wild. And so they went skydiving. I'm seeing that right now. They're wearing blue, a blue like suit, um, like those skydiving suits. It's blue though, dark blue, navy blue. All right. Um, we have your six of staffs. With the Six of Staffs, this talks about how this person was feeling that victory was elusive. They had done the work. They felt that they deserved the honors. But no one came to appreciate them. And this is suggested maybe because of a lack of awareness of those people around you. This person also had a lack of courage and even honor. They lacked honor and they lacked courage. But they wanted to be recognized for any sort of work that they may have done. This could be them investing any sort of time, energy, and effort into this connection with you. And that literally does mean if they took you out to a restaurant, they felt that they have done so much for you because they took you to the restaurant. And they felt that they deserve something after they get something. And that actually kind of goes with the materialistic card, doesn't it here? Like with the materialistic orientation, um, you give something, you get something, right? There's a barter, barter trade system here. I'm seeing this person's personality commerce. I'm seeing the word. It's, yeah, they are very, um, this person might be, honestly, they may be really good at business, but I'm getting the word ruthless also. Sometimes in business, you got to be ruthless too. It's just, it's not good though. I don't like it. I don't like that. I'm all for workers' rights. Um, but I do see that here happening, that this person is in a way 
spending money, but also being very careful with what they spend it on, not very careful, we may think they're being frivolous, I think is the word, but this person isn't. They think that what they're doing is the right thing, and they're spending it on the right stuff. And we also have here a situation where with the six of staffs, they felt that they truly did invest a lot of time, energy, and effort into this connection. Not only that, afterwards, they feel that they did not receive what it is that they desired. They desired to have more. They desired to learn more from this connection. Now, because of this, your person of interest here feels like they have lost the courage to stand up for themselves, actually. This is a problem. I'm just going to look up this word. Friv. Well, let's oh, there you are. Oh. Oh. Not having any serious purpose or value. I'm a person carefree and not serious. Okay, so I guess that is exactly what I meant when I saw that in my mind's eye. I saw the word frivolous. So this is how this person uh, was or how they're feeling. And... It's just a part of their personality at this age, the way they are through all of their experiences that they've had. This is something that is truly in their heart, in their mind. They cannot change this because this is who they are. All right. We have here also the Beginner's Tarot. With this deck, I'd like to have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions your person of interest may have towards you. All right. Wow. Um, okay. Aquarius, we have a situation here where you're dealing with somebody who is very much youthful, immature, maybe even inexperienced. In all honesty, I'm not getting inexperienced. I'm getting more so of immature behavior, but it seems as if they're in, um, inexperienced, but it's actually them being just simply immature. Here you're dealing with somebody who wants to take action first and thinks later. This is not a good situation to be in with this person if you are thinking that they would be the good lead in this connection. No, in this connection, if anything even works out, Aquarius, you have to be the leader in this connection. You have to be the one um, setting the pace and moving forward because this person clearly is immature, irresponsible. They are not thinking clearly. They are very carefree, and it's sometimes gotten them into a little bit of trouble as well. So this is a problem. We have also here the High Priestess. The High Priestess is your person of interest knowing that spiritually there is some type of a bond here that exists between the both of you. It's very strong. But they also realize that even if they have something deep down in their heart and in their mind, they want to move on, but they're not moving on. They're not really talking to you about anything. And yet they do have that faith and that belief inside of them. They're just not truly opening up about anything. We also have here the Ten of Wands. Now, this is huge. In their life, they have a lot of obstacles, a lot of hindrances, responsibilities, restrictions, constraints. So many things going on in this person's life and they are burdened. It's so much so that they cannot give you the time, energy, and effort that you deserve because all of their time, energy, and effort is being spent elsewhere. When that happens, it's time for this person, Crosswatcher, to be able to put these wands aside 
and to examine each one. What can I actually handle right now? What can I put off for later? What can I delegate to somebody else to do? Because here there's a lot of responsibilities and they're buckling under this pressure, right? This is a problem or their knees are buckling under this pressure. The problem here is that they have way too many things going on all at once and they're completely overwhelmed. This could also be related to work. Absolutely related to work. Here we also have the hanged man. Now, whatever has happened in this connection moving forward, you are dealing with somebody here who is waiting and trying to see what the reaction will be of you. What is your reaction in terms of so-and-so, in terms of such-and-such such circumstance? There's a desire to know what that reaction is. There is a desire to wait and see and wait for them, or sorry, they are waiting for you to make the first move. Now, this doesn't mean that you are going to make the first move. It doesn't mean that it might even work out. It doesn't mean that. It just means that they feel that they've thrown the ball in your court and they'd rather have you reach out to them. Even though they're overwhelmed. This is an attention seeker. Because if they're overwhelmed and if they're waiting for you to reach out to them, they're going to say hello, talk to you for a little bit, and that's the end of it. That's the end of it. They're not going to want to proceed anything further because you're dealing with somebody here who does not know how to be in a long-term committed connection in the right sort of way and to allocate their time. They do not give you that time because they can't. This is a situation where this person wants you to reach out and if you do, they know that they have the upper hand and then you're still waiting in the dark. That's it. It's best to keep your distance from this specific person and to let this person reach out to you. Their overall understanding, desire, and theme here is the Two of Cups. There's no doubt they want to be with you. No doubt about that. The problem with this card is that it also talks about how in this connection they want to reconcile, they want to be with you. But the problem I'm seeing with these cards is that even if they do that, they're still going to put you on the back burner. They just simply want to know that I have my Aquarius and I'm going to put my Aquarius on the back burner. I'm going to put my Aquarius in my pocket, on my back pocket, so that whenever I need my Aquarius, Aquarius will always be there for me. What is that? That's not something that you deserve. That's not something any person deserves. This is somebody who really needs to recognize truly what love is and how love works. This is not the type of person anybody can be with right now. This is not a happy relationship. This is what the cross watcher thinks will make them happy, but will it actually make them happy? No, it will not. It will satisfy them for a little bit, and it might even satisfy you for a little bit, but beyond that, it will hurt, because it is not a long-term committed connection. What I also see here with the Two of Cups is that feeling of reconciliation, of uniting together, of being friends, peace and harmony, partnership. That's what this person wants. The problem with it is when you have a look at this card carefully, it does talk about two people coming together, soulmates, right? But then you also have this flip side to the story too, that they're just wanting to take a leap of faith, but they're not really saying anything because they're very stressed and they're waiting for you to see what your reaction is going to be. But does it show me any actual sort of effort? The only effort I see is the Fool card. And that is not truly a very promising sort of card. Because the Fool card talks about somebody who is very, um, I'm getting actually, um, aggressive. Uh, I'm getting another word actually, which I probably can't say on YouTube, I guess, these days. Um, misuse, basically. Let me just put it this way. They misused you. Uh, the way that they should not have, but this is the type of personality this person has. And they don't think that they're misusing you. The issue with this card is that you're dealing with somebody here who is a bit on the immature side and they, like I said, they take action first and think later. This connection could finish as soon as it had started. So the solution, Aquarius, is for you, if this person reaches out, for you to take it slow 
and to be the leader in this connection. You have to be the lead in this connection. Otherwise, it's probably not going to move as graciously, as wonderfully as you had hoped for. Because this person still has a lot of burdens. And they are very overwhelmed. So to give you that time, energy, and effort, it may be very challenging for them. All right. I have here... Archangel answer cards. I did um, earlier, before I started this reading, I did, I did um, a quick prayer on it. Wow. Interesting. So we have here, first card the strongest. There's an opportunity that is coming. This is for you, Aquarius. So this is really good. There's going to be an opportunity that's going to come to you, and it's very important to stay open to new opportunities or any opportunity that may come. Here we also have meditation brings answers. So this talks about you getting back to the source. This is you meditating. This is you praying. And this is to the divine, the holy white light of God, the universe. Do meditate. Minimum 21 minutes is good two to three minutes for prayer, but when you do it, actually mean it. It's just like a Wi-Fi connection. The stronger the connection, the stronger the upload, download, it works just like that. Here we also have if you believe. So if you believe that certain things may work out in this connection, they will. And this is you sending out that positive energy and that vibe into the universe and receiving that in return. Whatever happens here with that meditation that's going to bring you answers, you are going to be receiving messages, answers, information that is going to make you reconsider. You have the reconsider card there. It's going to make you reconsider what it is that you should do in this connection. You're going to have to think twice about it. Here we also have all of this is going to happen in divine timing and perfect timing. You will understand when this takes place and you will understand how to deal with it when it does. Here, they're also saying not to give up. Don't stop. Don't stop giving and receiving positive energy. Keep that positive energy flowing. It's very important for you to do that because you will be attracting a lot of positive energy towards you. Here we also have trust. Trust in the divine. Trust in the Christ consciousness. Trust in the holy light of God. Do trust. Because when you do that, you know that the universe has got your back. Somebody and many of the angels, gods, celestial beings, they're all looking out for you. Your spirit guides, your good spirit guides, they're all looking out for you. So do understand you're not alone. You're a creative child of God, and you're equally as loved. You're not alone. You just can't see them. Most of us can't. We also have here in the near future. So it does show here that something is going to happen. What is going to happen? The opportunity that's going to come, it could be in the near future. Now I'm not proficient um, at timelines because even we don't even have a timeline here right now, but in the near future could mean, you know, even four or five months from now, it may seem far to you, but it could be. Because uh, I'm seeing four and five, I'm even seeing six and seven. So let's just say um, a few months, okay, a few months from now, you will notice that there may be an opportunity that's coming your way. Please take that opportunity. Do not dismiss it. You don't know until you try. Aquarius, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. And for those of you who are looking for love readings, I do have 
some love readings open right now. I believe it's the express um, love reading with the audio. I have a package on that. I also have some packages on how to get rid of negative energies. And I also have one package on past life and spiritual connections. You can find these on my website, www.asnoincha.com. The link is also below. And that is on the rates and packages section or the tab. Also, I have another channel called Asnoincha Audio, and there I have some videos on negative energy. There's one video on negative energy, what and who they are, how to tackle them and how to remove them from your life. And when I, when I mean tackle, it's just a bunch of procedures that you have to follow and that those packages I have. So it's, it's pretty s simple, straightforward. I also have some videos on past life and spiritual connections. And also have one or a few of them on relationships, relationship related advice, which I feel is very in tune with this particular reading that you just did, or we just did, or rather I just did. <laughs> it's we, because it's your energy too. You helped me do it. Um, that particular playlist that I have, or not the list, but it's what it's called, the category list, whatever it's called, that particular one with the the help and the guidance that I give you for relationships, it's very different and it's very unique because I actually have made those videos, those audio recordings on the basis of what other people feel. So it's not like a typical advice that you may see on channels or you may read about. I actually go down and break it down in terms of what a person is feeling and why they behave the way that they do. The only reason I can do that is because I do do that, right? I do this with you guys. I do this with a cross watcher. So why not know when people are going through a certain scenario or through a certain situation in a relationship, why not know that? That's something that I do. That is something that you can definitely see on there and hopefully it provides you with some understanding and some um, insight. And you would know how to handle a certain situation when the time comes. So those videos are also quite helpful. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. I do read your comments and I'd like to um, answer as much as I can, but I do read your stories. And it is often that these stories, they motivate me to actually create those other videos on my other website because so many, not website, my um, YouTube channel. There's so many of you that go through the same thing and it really doesn't matter where you're from, from earth. It's everybody's going through the same stuff. It's just so weird. It's really strange. People are from so many different places. And I get, I do readings now. It's amazing for me because they're from everywhere, all over the planet. But it doesn't matter what language you speak. The language of love, behaviors, the way we react, it's all the same. So please feel free to tell me your story because I do read them and I do use them as inspiration and even motivation to provide you know, those of you who are struggling with this, with some information that I can help you with. And I do have the ability of doing that. And that's why exactly I do the readings. And also I decided to make those um, audio recordings, which is on my other channel, Asnoincha Audio. And please keep in mind those videos are absolutely free. All right. You all take care, stay safe, and let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. Take care now. Bye.